talking with the newest AMSOIL USAC National Rookie of the Year contender out of Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania, Joey Mantia. And Joey, you're 19. You're a very excitable young guy. So I'm sure this, you've probably never been more excited about anything in your life to come on a 55 race swing with the Amsoil USAC National Sprint Cars. No, absolutely. I've, uh, ever since I was little racing quarter midgets, I'll never forget going to Eldora for the quarter midget race. And it was the same weekend as Four Crown and watching the sprint cars run around that track for the first time. I remember just thinking in my head, I want to do that someday. And seven years later, I get to accomplish that dream. Uh, especially with USAC, really excited about that. We've taken the past two seasons back home with USAC East Coast, building our team up to prepare for this and kind of took the first steps last year We're coming out and running Sprint Week and SmackDown and ended up making SmackDown, which really was our defining factor of if we can go do this or not. So no, really, re I'm really pumped, it's, it's awesome. Despite being super young, you've been behind the wheel for a long time, but one thing I love hearing from sprint car drivers or just race car drivers in general, what was the first time you saw a sprint car as a young child and said, that's what I want to drive, that's what I want to do? Uh, oh man, well, I guess the first time seeing a sprint car I was at, oh man, that's actually a really good question. <laughs> I think probably Grandview, uh, probably when I was like six or seven years old is when I got introduced to them. I believe uh, they were, there was wing cars there, um, but I knew they were, that, that was super cool. And that's kind of like, especially, I started quarter midget racing at five and didn't really know, you know, as a five-year-old, if a man, do I want to be a race car driver? Do I want to do this? But once my dad took me to a big car track and I got to see like what I could do someday, that's how I knew like, yeah, I want to I wanna stick with racing. This is, this is cool. So the quarter midget deal you said started at five, correct? Yep. More so me and my dad just, actually really it was just my dad and I having a good time and then I got an opportunity uh, with a sprint car ride. We knew we wanted to do non-wing from the start just because all of my career, like with Mike with the 600s, we mainly did non-wing and uh, I think non-wing racing is the most badass form of sprint car racing out there so I definitely wanted to stick with it and uh, three years later uh, we're here. And I look at my camera roll all the time and just look at old pictures of where I was and where I am now and just super grateful to be where I am. So Exci excited for this year, 100%. You talked about all the change over the course of your career going from the quarter midgets to the, the micros and now with an on-wing 410 sprint car. One thing that has always stayed the same with your race cars is the flames. Absolutely. Yeah. What is it about the flames that you love? I mean, it's been something you've carried throughout your entire career. So I, uh, it's actually funny. The first, the first quarter midget I ever had and this is actually where the red comes from, it was just a red car with, uh, yeah, red. it was just a red car, and I love that car. I actually still have it. It's sitting in a, at our masonry shop on a Raptor, <laughs> actually halfway apart because our guys have had to take parts off of it to use for our, uh, for our equipment at the shop. But I always, I remember being four years old, coming downstairs one day, and my dad had a NASCAR race on, and the first two cars I saw were Jeff Gordon's Flames car and Dale Jr.'s 88 car. And uh, from there, that's kind of where 88J comes from. And I just love Flames. So I figured, you know what? Everybody, I don't know, everybody's got their own thing. And some of these cars nowadays, I don't think look as flashy as they could. And I'm a flashy guy, as, <laughs> as you can tell with the whole tire. But uh, no, that's kind of, and my mom says it too. She's like, Joey, you've had Flames your whole life. You're not getting rid of them because <laughs> so it's a mom knows. thing now. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> She'll, you know, don't let her lie to you. She's more into this than all of us. Um, it, and she, of course, she's the only one not here right now. Uh, but she's flying in next week. So, but yeah, no, the flames, flames are here to stay. Uh, as long, I, if you see an 88J, it's gonna have flames on it. <laughs> That's so good to hear. And you brought up two really good points right there. You talked about JPA Masonry. That's your dad's company, but your mom also has a real estate company. And um, you know, some kids have a parents or fa family that owns one business. You're in a family that owns two business just between your two parents. What kind of life lessons has that taught you along the way? Oh, it's a ton. I mean, it's it's something new every day with, with us. Uh, you know, my parents uh, worked really hard for everything they got. And obviously I can't thank them enough for everything because uh, obviously, we're a family-run team. Um, everything we have, m most of it comes out of our pocket. So seeing how hard they've worked for me to be able to put me in this position to be a, to have a competitive race car on the USAC National Tour uh, is something certainly special. And it's just nice, too, knowing that 
no matter what, like if racing never worked out for me or any of this, I, I have something to go back home to that say, hey, I, I can have a living no matter what. So no, I, I can't thank them enough for everything. And hopefully, hopefully I'm living up to their expectations. You mentioned earlier that SmackDown is kind of the deciding factor, but the start of your, I guess, kind of mid-season run with the Amsoil USAC National Sprint Car Series last year, PA did not go good for you no, guys. No, it was where bad. You, where you think you would be your best was your worst, and then to you know have that sprint week and then have SmackDown go so well, how, was that a bit of a surprise for you guys just because back home you guys weren't that fast with us? So I guess I'll put it in a little perspective of what happened back home. So we had an engine issue the whole week that we, we should have changed. I knew something was wrong. Like, well, Grandview, Grandview's Grandview. We kind of, we got in a wreck in the heat race. And then you, once you're buried in the B main there, it's kind of really hard to get out of it. Uh, but we went to Big Diamond and I'm not the best at Big Diamond back home anyway, but I knew there was something wrong. Like it just, the car didn't have speed uh, like it should. And then, well, then the Grove really, we went for time trials at the Grove. I thought I ran two awesome laps. Like I came in bumped, like, oh my God, are we quick time? And my dad's like, yeah, we're dead last. I'm like, what? Like, we're dead last? Like, that, that's impossible. Like, I just, <laughs> I just ran the heck out of the car. I mean, like I was wheeling, rolling into the corner and we're dead last. So now I'm excited. We're here again and getting ready to start the season. Well, Joey, I think everybody can tell after this interview, you're not only excited, but you're passionate. Absolutely. And that's, that's going to come off on the racetrack. We wish you the best of luck in your rookie season. Thank you. Appreciate it.